Hey everybody, Joshua Daniels, Executive Director of the Sea Lions Foundation. Here to talk to you today about the, the, Lord, the Word of God a little bit because the Holy Spirit has been laying on my heart to put some teachings up on the web to try to clarify some of the um, nonsense that is being spread about what the Scripture actually says. The Scripture is actually pretty direct uh, and where there's any kind there seems to be a conflict in it, you can look at the original Greek and Hebrew without learning those languages. There are good dictionaries for you to find out how it was mistranslated, which is usually what causes the problems. Because for some reason the translators, I, I don't know what their deal is, don't know, don't care. I know that the Word of God is living and active, it is a, like a sharper than a two-edged sword, dividing between joints and marrow, between soul and spirit, and discerning the thoughts and intents of the heart. Now, if you don't believe the scriptures, well, I don't have a lot to say to you because I know that if you won't believe Moses and the prophets, you won't believe one back from the dead. So it's all up to you what you're going to do and think and believe during all this. But let's start at the beginning. First of all, who are you? In whose image were you made? Most people would say, well, I was made in God's image because Adam was made in God's image and I'm descended from Adam. Right? A little problem with that. Adam had two sons, Cain and Abel. Cain killed Abel, and Abel died childless, and then Cain went off to live in the land of Nod, where he had sons and daughters, but all of his descendants died in the flood. Then in Genesis 5, verse 3, we find that Adam had another son and named him Seth. And he had Seth, ready for this, in his own likeness, in his own image. It says that in so many words. This happened after Adam sinned. He was no longer bearing God's image. God's image is sinless. The image in which God made Seth, or in which Adam made Seth, was a marred, flawed, sinful image. Very separate, very distinct. You were not made in God's image in any sense. The scripture says you weren't. That's very important. Because only two people in the scripture are referred to as being in God's image. One of those, of course, is Adam. The other one is Jesus. Jesus Christ. In Hebrews uh, 1, 3, he is described as being the very living image of God. When Jesus went to visit Nicodemus, or, I'm sorry, Nicodemus went to visit Jesus in John 3, Jesus said, unless a man be born from above, he cannot see the kingdom of heaven. Nicodemus didn't understand, and so Jesus clarified, unless a man be born of water and the spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of heaven. It takes both. Now, being born of water is pretty simple. We see that in baptism, where you go into the water, not sprinkled. Sprinkling is useless. Okay? You go into the water, and you come up out of the water. It's just like you're coming out of a uterus. You're born of the water. Colossians 2 tells us that it is in the water that the circumcision of the heart is done. In baptism, the circum which is simply the Greek word for immerse. Okay? Um, it's in baptism that the circumcision of the heart is done, which is the removal of the corrupt nature. This is why for so many Christians there's a real dichotomy, a real uh, stress that, come, that goes on after they've accepted Jesus. The corrupt nature has been removed, but the habits, uh, the thought patterns that we developed under it are remaining and they have to be trained out. So this is why uh, Paul went on to say, the spirit wars against the flesh. Right? Could the flesh is trying to, to rebuild the old corrupt nature and the corrupt nature is just gone. So there's a struggle, right? Then there are only two men in the whole scripture called sons of God. Sons of God at all. That's Adam and Jesus uh, in Luke 3.38 and in Mark 1.1. 1, 1. Those are the only two that are called sons of God. Those are the only two that are referred to as being made in the image of God. That's it. So if you want to be made in the image of God, you have to be reborn of the water and the spirit. And this is why in John 1, it says, to such as received Jesus, to them gave he power to become sons of God. That means when you receive Jesus, you're not a son of God. You now have the power to become a son of God. And that power comes from the Holy Spirit, where all power comes from. Not by might, not by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord. And that baptism is done exactly as we saw in Acts 2 at Pentecost where the Spirit came on people and endued them with power and endued them with knowledge that they had not learned through human means. This is available to you. Yeah. Seek it out. If you can't find it, call us here. We'll help you get it. Right? The rebirth is in baptism. 
That's John 3, 1. The completion of the pregnancy, where the, where the birth is, the, the whole thing is done, is in being reborn of the Spirit and showing the fruit of the Spirit, love, joy, peace, gentleness, goodness, kindness, faithfulness, self-control, etc. Right? So, the short answer to uh, were you made in God's image is no. Can you be made in God's image? Yes. If you will let yourself be remade in God's image by the Spirit, if you will answer God's call, get baptized, dunked in the water, and expect the removal of the corrupt nature. That's what faith is. It's expecting God to do something. Right? And then expect the baptism of the Holy Spirit, although those can happen in reverse order, where you get the baptism of the Holy Spirit first. Right? If you'll do that, then you can. You will then have the power to become, to, to genuinely act like and live like a son of God, which will give you the right to the tree of life in Revelation. The right to the tree of life means you can live forever. Okay. We'll talk more on living forever and all that later. Joshua Daniels, Sea Lions Foundation. Have a great one.